meeting to order at 6 30. Um, could we have a roll call? We have a forum. Gary Dean. Yeah. Stephen Bogart. There. Mike Ward. Yeah. Matthew Cooper. Here. Barbara Comcock. Yeah. Russell Jume. Not here. No, Russell is not here. If he was here, here. Here. Dana Carter. Here. David Nagel. He, oh, he'll be late. He'll be about five minutes late from there. Grab some here. Yeah. Uh, Tom Poge. Lisa Smart. Here. Charlie St. Clear. <laughs> She's not here yet. Okay. Oh, Terry? Douglas Top Project? Yes. Uh, Peter Martin. 14, we have a form. Oh, yeah, the minutes right there. Got to grab it. Like, we're going to the Pledge of Allegiance. Representative Terry, would you lead us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for standards, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I make a motion to add them to our agenda before we continue. We have a, a motion on the floor. I'd just like to add other business before your amendments. Without objection. Any objection to add? Do we have a specification of items of other business? Uh, it's just allowed to open the floor to anyone that any of the new people to allow them to add to the input more than just what's on this agenda or what's moving forward with us. So, an open ended just to end the meeting open. -ended. Thank you. No objection. So, good. so now we'll go to the, uh, the minutes. We did a motion to accept the minutes. Second that. Thank you. Now that the minutes have been seconded, there's some items that I believe that should be on the minutes that aren't there. Especially when we are talking about cost items, there are no dollar amounts listed on these minutes. So if someone wanted to go back in history, it says to approve cost items. The cost items are not attached to the draft, nor the the dollar amounts. I think it's extremely important that everybody understands what was that. Um, I think we that <laughs> might be uh, this jacket. Didn't didn't we work on that together and were added? I don't know, but it would be easy enough to attach what was presented for cost items at the meeting. Um, I can attach that to the minutes. So I will wait until those are. You can always just prove the minutes. So, does somebody want to change the, the motion to the drive? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we table to the agenda acceptance of the agenda for our next meeting and how. In the the, the minutes you're talking about? Yes. Okay, that takes priority. Um, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes. Since they brought up some questions on dollar amounts and whatnot, we, uh, we need to wait to verify that those numbers are in fact what was talked about, then it would be appropriate that the uh, uh, Minutes be tabled to the next minute meetings because I don't believe anything on there was of any priority whatsoever that needed to add any of the business for us tonight. 
I probably should have got a second before I did that. Yeah, that's what we did. You know, I might make some mistakes here. I'm I'm not a professional chairperson here, but uh, I'm going to go through this. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to put this to a. Yeah, voice vote. Can we do a voice vote? All, all in favor of uh, tabling this this tabling motion? Say aye. Aye. Who's the next meeting for the next meeting? Right. All opposed? <coughs> Pass. Okay. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the election of offices. I'd like to open the uh, anybody who wants to nominate someone willing to start with the chair. The way that this is uh, going to work without objection is these little paper ballots that we have here. You're going to have to write in the position that you're voting on, which the first the first one will be for the chair. And uh, who you're voting for would be the nominee. So we'll open nominations for chair. Uh, I think I'll nominate Harry Dean. Yeah. I'd like to say one more thing. If, if you're nominated, please, if you don't intend to do it, please say so up front so that we don't go through a whole rigmarole. Representative, Representative Comfort. Yes, before we um, do all the election of offices, and later what we just explained, I do have a couple of questions. One, my first question is, are we still operating under Robert's rules of work as we as we are continuing this? I guess is my first question. Um, I think that we are until uh, they're, they're voted out. Okay. May I have another question? Sure, thank you. Um, and I would like to ask the parliamentarian if on the election of officers for the delegation, can you put state present or do you have to absolutely vote for one person? Under Robert's rules, you have the, the right to abstain or vote for, you can either vote for a one or more candidates or you can abstain. Thank you. And may I follow? Uh, yes. Um, the voting uh, by secret ballot is absolutely illegal. We have been, this delegation has been sued in the past, and it has to be an open public hearing to know who's being voted. That's for. why your name's on the top of the ballot. Okay, but so, oh. but you, they're going to have to call off the roll. So, what's the difference between doing it this way and calling the roll on who's going to vote? They're going to do it this way for us so that people, the, people, the delegates, are uh, unaware of what's going on so that they're going to vote their own conscience rather than somebody prior to them and the public will still know who voted for who. Okay, thank you. The point of clarification, I'll, I'll read off, I'll, I'll collect them as a clerk, the clerk of last session, and I'll read off the news getting what vote for which position. So just make sure when you fill it out, fill out like chair, obviously. And who you're nominating, and then so it's still public vote, mm. but it's not we're not influencing each other uh, with the roll call vote. So, Jim. Representative Hewitt, well, I I seem to understand something about how this is going to be a process by which even the nomination is the secret because you're going to nominate somebody, uh, but it's going to be on paper. The, the nominations are going to be right now. This should be saying who you're voting for, not a nominee. This yes. is for your vote, not nomination. Okay. It's the nominee that you're voting yeah. for. Okay. Nominee, the bottom line. Everyone clear with that? Yes. And explain the majority. Okay, so you, you, you have to have a majority. There's uh, how many of us are there? Seven. So we're going to have uh, you're going to have to have eight votes to uh, to be elected. Under elections, if I'm correct, yes, I'm wrong. But if someone abstains, their vote is no and really says it doesn't count towards a majority or a minority. It doesn't count. It's like a non-vote. A non-vote doesn't count for so. 
Uh, Representative Dumais just got here. Yes. Uh, so we're going to actually it is, it is counted for the requirement for majority. But I'll look here and see. So we got to, uh, we're going to have to uh, allow Representative St. Clair without, well, we got to finish this for I guess. So um, we have nominations for, ch for the chair. Harry Bean. Second. Yes. Do we have any other nominations? Mr. Chair, I would like to wait till we have the Robert rules of the order decision. If we could, the vote would be enough. Well, depending on their answer. What's the question? One. Of the members present, if there are 100 members that are present, the majority is 51. The effect of an abstention is that it does not count towards the majority. So, therefore, eight votes would go well, out of how many do we have here? Oh, okay. Nine would be a good We need nine. We need nine. Yeah, because it's 18 members. We got nine. We got nine. We got nine. Is uh, Representative Sinclair on Zoom yet? No, he's not. So, uh, without objection, I want to allow Representative Sinclair on Zoom when uh, when he comes on. He's in the hospital. Uh, yeah. Surgery, I guess. I don't know exactly what back surgery. So we're, we're going to allow him to uh, to uh, participate when he when he comes on Zoom. So do we have any other uh, nominations? Seeing none, I guess we'll go with nominations. And we'll do nominations to close. Second. We have a second. second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. So we're going to do these one at a time. Well, this is chairman, can I move that the clerk submits one ballot for your your vote chairmanship? And I'll second on that motion too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to do a vote Especially now that we allow a charter. That's true. But he's not here. Yeah, they're not all oh, he's coming. on ballot stuff. Okay. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. So uh so this is gonna be a verbal roll call. No, I thought it's on the verbal ballot. What's that? It's on the verbal ballot. I guess the We still we still do that. We still do that first and then uh what? So Harry Dean is so your position is chair and the nominee is Harry Dean. Yeah. And she will uh when she gets all of the, the ballots, she will read them off and that'd be the same as a roll call. Sure. Uh, just so I can understand, but Charlie won't be able to vote for the chair, but when it comes time, he'll start voting at that point. If we 
like and vote before he gets there. Well, we don't have to go for the chair at this moment either. That, well, the chair has to be okay, yes. for us <laughs> so that you've got somebody to run the meeting. <laughs> so, if everybody will vote and pass your ballots down this way to uh, the clerk. Harry, Harry, I'm sorry I got on this meeting uh, late. Yeah. So, you're saying I can't vote because I'm not yeah. there in person? Yeah. 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 The vote has to be by roll call. Yeah. And it has to be allowed, right? Now that Correct. Yes. Now we're yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, just do a roll call, call, I guess. So now that he's on there, he, he, can't, he can't do a ballot. Yeah. Um, uh, actually just, yeah. Yeah. So can you tell me the candidates since I missed that? Yeah, want to know who the candidate, who the candidate is for hey. chair. Well, I guess I'm the only one so far. Yeah. I don't know if you have any you want to. Nominations are closed. Oh yeah, nominations are closed. You can't. So uh, I'm the only one on the ballot. This is representative. Well, I'd make a motion to cast just one vote for you. We can't. We can't. I tried. Yeah, we tried that. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we, there's going to be a roll call. If you'll uh, call the roll. Certainly. Uh, Chair Harry Bean. Uh, Harry Bean. <laughs> yes. I mixed that multi Harry Bean time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Richard Richard Bowden. Harry Bean. That's yes. Yes. Okay. Stephen Bowden. So we'll yes. yes. For chairing. Like yes. 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 Sorry, the nominated. Russell Dume. Yes. Clerk votes yes. David Hewitt. Aye. Vicky McCarter. Yeah. David Nagel. Yes. Travis O'Hare. Yes. Thomas McClode. Yes. Lisa Smart. Yes. Charlie St. Clair. Yes. Paul Carey. Yes. Yes. And we still have Peter Marty. Yeses. So, um, I got over the Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'd like to open nomination for uh, vice chair. I'd like to make a nomination. Yes. Uh, Representative Prodio. Uh, Representative Bullets. You want a second? Are there any other nominations? Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Yeah. Nominate. Uh, do that. I'll be really happy for vice chair. I didn't see you. Can you ask him to speak up a little bit? <laughs> I nominate Juliet Harvey Bolliard for vice chair. Right. We have a second. Have a second. Are there any other nominations? I move the nominations be closed. Okay. A second on that. All in favor of closing the nomination, say aye. 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 Opposed. Nominations are closed. <laughs> So we still can't do this because of Charlie. Okay, so it's going to be a, a, a roll call on on uh, on all of them at this point, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was here. This time we have to choose the same. Can you repeat the candidates' um, names, please? Repeat the names, the candidates. Yes. Go ahead, repeat the candidates. Julia Harvey Bolia and Mike Borch. The vice chair. 
Harry Bean. I'm going to vote for uh, Abby Bowler. <laughs> uh, Richard Bowden. My board. Stephen Bogert. I'm going to vote for Mike. Oh, yes. Uh, Mike. 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 I got it. I'm listening to that. <laughs> Matthew Coker. Mike Ford. Earl Comfort. I'm staying. What's his name? Mike Rhodes. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have declared votes for herself. Uh, David Hewitt. Mike Ford is. Carter. Juliet. Kevin Boyle. Uh, David Nagel. Abstain. Scott Sohara. Abstain. Thomas Bloge. Harvey Bollier. Lisa Smart. Harvey Bollier. <coughs> Charlie St. Clair. Charlie. So I'm Charlie. going to abstain. He abstains. <laughs> Paul Terry. Abstain. So Peter Barney not here. Four is one. Seven. Five for myself. Uh it's Seven. I, I, I have seven for my cords, five for myself, seconds. and five extensions. So you, you got to speak a little louder. I, I'm having, I should have worn a hearing. Uh, seven votes for my cords, yep. five for myself, Julian Harvey Bolia, and not five majority. abstentions. It's not a majority. Oh, we have a question. Well, if, if, if you're dropping, please, you drop five. Exactly. That's the problem with the rubber tools. No, well, it's no, not the problem with the people who are calling rubber tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When images eight and sentences not count the list. Right. We've not said it's all today. We've got no vote. Seven. 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 Thank you. Representative Bogart, could you speak up, please? Yes. We should have my question. So if the extensions don't count as a yes or a no, then it has to be based off of the amount of those who voted. Representative Terry finds his. Of everybody's rules. It says right here absent uh, extensions, instances in which members who are not present do not vote are not counted and have no effect on the results. Oh, that, so is that under elections? Wait, wait, wait. That's, that's under here. One, one, one person at a time, please. Representative Bogut has the has the floor right now. You got to speak loud enough for everybody to hear, not not just represent. The question was, do I have a reference number to where I'm citing it from in the Robert Rules of Order? And I said, no, it doesn't give me a reference number. It's stated under. The chair puts it when you're voting on elections or questions, people voting for a person in a question that being brought up, and it's, it's either yes, no, or abstain. And the abstentions I put here say do not have an adverse effect, a positive or negative effect on the outcome. So, in order for it not to have a negative effect, then it should not be counted. As those who voted, so 12 people voted, and then the majority of those 12 seven. people is what is needed. So that would be seven. Win. Yes. Um, 
you remove the ruling, you're the chair now. If they object to the ruling, then the I want to see what Representative to... Terry has to say. I understand that there's a, a bunch of different versions of this Roberts rule. No, there, 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 actually, it's just a little bit By modifying the concepts of a majority vote and a two thirds vote on the basis of determining the voting result, we need to find that if someone times prescribed by rules, two elements enter into the definitions of such bases and decisions. Portion that must concur as a majority, two thirds, three fourths, et cetera, and the set of members to which the proportion applies, which, when not stated, is always the number of members present in voting, but can be specified by rule as the number of members present, the total membership, or some other grouping. So, absent any other uh, definition of how the votes are going to be counted. In, the decision will be made. It appears as though present in voting is the uh, is, is the determinative factor. And since abstentions are not votes, therefore the abstention do not count. Therefore, a vote of seven to five appears to be the vote that elects uh, the candidate to make seven votes. So the two of you are in agreement. We are in agreement. Well. Uh, I guess I'm going to. You're all set? Yeah. I think Representative Plogier had something to say. It has been answered, sure. It appears as though, uh, based on the Robert's rules, of the ladies and gentlemen, that uh, Representative Boards is the, the new vice chair. So, um, what? Yeah, I want to open nominations for uh, clerk. Does anybody have a nomination? Representative Prodi. I would um, nominate uh, Representative O'Hara. We have a second. Second. Are there any other nominations? I make a motion that. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, would, uh, the, would the clerk call the uh, roll? Uh, Harry Bean. Representative O'Hara. Okay. Richard Bowden. Yes. Uh, Stephen Bogart. Yes, who are here? Mike Boards. Oh, Eric. Kathy Coker. Yes. Carver Conflaw. Yes. Mr. Dume. We got it. Uh, that's Carol. Um, David Hewitt. Yes. Carter. Yes. David Nagel. Yes. Travis O'Hara. Yes. yes. Tom Cloger. Spain. Smart. Yes. Charlie St. Clair. Sorry, voted twice. Yes. Yeah. Folks, Travis O'Hara received 15 votes. So, Representative O'Hara is the new clerk. What was that vote again, please? I didn't hear a second. 13 with four abstentions. 13 more and four. Okay. I'll buy that. So, maybe uh, Representative Boards should switch places with Representative Boards. So at this point, we need uh, two more uh, two more people elected at large: the executive committee, the chair, vice chair, and the clerk. Uh, three. So there has to be two two at large. 
So we'll open the uh, nominations. Representative Contois. Yes, I'd like to nominate Representative St. Clair. We get a second on that? Sure. Second. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Representative Bogart. I'd like to nominate uh, Representative Cook. I'll second that. Okay. Okay. This is uh, yeah. Um, this is we got to do these one at a time. Yes, it would be almost impossible to do it any other way. One seat at a time, right? It's pretty easy. So this this first seat. Like one seat at a time for the executive yes. committee. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can have been nominated for one seat. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Are there any are there any other nominations for that first seat? I'd like to make a motion to close nominations. Second. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. Excuse Aye. me, Mr. Chairman. Representative Hewitt. Uh, I have a point of order. A number of years ago, uh, there was a debate in this body uh, concerning uh, the election of uh, people to the uh, executive committee. And it was first, the first time uh, the vote was taken, uh, I, got, I got elected. Then some, something happened and nobody really knows what it was, but it wound up that uh, I got unelected. And I didn't do anything, but somebody sued this outfit, Superior Court, and lost. The, uh, the, uh, the ruling being that the uh, the body uh, body that has members of more than one party must have representation from the minority party, uh, and in this case, the only the only source that each of the other officers are individual people, uh, the other can be anybody, and so uh, a Democrat in this case would have to be elected to the board of trustees. I was going to do that for the second seat. I was going to you know depending on what happened on the first seat. I was going to say that it, uh, there had to be a Democrat and minority. Okay. Uh, both, both candidates are from the minority ballot on yes. this race. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and Did that's I, why I was going to wait. I didn't hear who the nominations were for it being like this. It happened on its own, which is obviously who's going to. Charlie needs to know who's nominated. Who can't do it. Charlie, you've been nominated and uh, Representative Coker. God. <laughs> Um, you hear that? I'm not exactly thrilled about that, everybody, uh, with my schedule and everything. Uh, I would prefer to have my nomination withdrawn if that's possible. I appreciate the nomination, whoever made it. But, uh, uh, so the nominations have been closed. Oh, great. Okay. Withdraw it. Yeah. Okay. Who, who made the motion? Who made the motion? That one, sorry. I did. Would you like to withdraw that? Thing. What's that? I will she, Yeah, she's on major. Okay, so okay. Who, who made the motion to uh, end the uh, nominations? That's that's the one that's got to be withdrawn. Yeah. Mine have to be withdrawn first. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I believe you had asked the delegation if, if anyone uh, did not want to stand for election, did they he or she indicate so before nominations are closed? In this instance, that did not happen. So I suggest uh, a do over with respect to the motion that we approve the closed nominations since we have learned after the fact that Representative St. Clair does not wish to stand for election, but that we reopen a nomination for election. Is that a motion? I move that we withdraw of the motion to uh, to rescind the motion to close nominations. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So we're, we're going to reopen the nominations for the uh, the at large seat. Nominate. So can I make a nomination or am I too late? You can wait, wait just a second. Okay, we have a, a motion to, uh, a nomination of uh, Representative Hewitt. We have a second. I second that. <laughs> okay. 
Is this another yeah. nomination? Like nominate Matt Croker for uh, the executive committee. Oh, we, we rescinded it all, didn't we? Uh, oh, no, we rescinded the motion to close nomination. Oh, okay. I thought we were rescinded everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're good with Matt still so we Now we have two. We now have two, two nominees. Representative Coker and Representative Hewitt. Now I move the nomination to close. <laughs> Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Yeah. So this was for executive committee between uh, Representative Hewitt and Kroger. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, Representative Kroger. Representative Kroger. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I you. Representative Boger. Huh? Boger. Uh, Representative Boards. Boger. Representative Boger. Hewitt. 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 Representative Harvey Butler. Representative Hewitt. Hewitt. Representative Carter. Hewitt. Representative Randall. Representative Hewitt. Clark Hurts or Kroger. Representative Plochet. I'm David Corkham. Hewitt. <laughs> Representative Smart. Hewitt. Representative St. Clair. Representative Hewitt. Representative here. Representative Hewitt. Representative Trotter. Colton. And Representative M7 Hewitt. Representative Hewitt. Thank you. We've got to have one more at large. Um, so we're going to open the nominations. I'll nominate Coker. We have a nomination for Coker. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second. Okay, do we have any other nominations? I'm honored, but I, I, uh, I respect the uh, Do we have any other nominations? I nominate um, Representative Boger. Do we have a second on uh, Representative Boger? I'll second that. We have a second. Are there any other nominations? Uh, sure. I can nominate Julia Hart and Blair. I didn't hear what you said. Julia Hart and Blair. Do we have a second on? <clears throat> well, I'll be the second one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Are there any other nominations? <laughs> We have a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nominations are closed. Got three. Good luck. I'm trying to add another line. Hold on. All right. So this is for the second executive council seat between Representative Croker, Representative Boger, and Representative Harvey Bullock. Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'd like to vote for Julia Harvey Bowman. Representative Boger. Representative Boger. 
Representative Boards. Coker. Representative Coker. Coker. Representative Confaw. Abstain. Thank you. All right. Um, Representative Dumais. All you. Sorry, what you say? All you. All you. All you. All you. Thank you. Juliet, Representative Harry Bolia. Oh, myself. Representative Hewitt. Bolia. Representative Carter. Bolia. Representative Nagel. Abstain. Um, <coughs> Clerk votes for Juliet Harry Bolia. Representative Floje. Harry Bolia. Representative Smart. <coughs> Sorry. Um, Harry Bolia. Representative Charlie St. Clair. Uh, Matt Croker. Representative Terry. Representative Trotier. I'll be voting. Four votes for Croker, nine votes for Julia Harvey Bulliard, one vote for Boger, and three abstentions. Julia Harvey Bulliard has a majority. So that, that's. Uh, yeah, because three. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. So just open that up now. Is that where we're at? I haven't looked at the agenda. Yeah, that public hearing's for the budget, correct? Yeah. We'll open the public hearing. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, representatives. Nice to see everyone. We have a an overview of the 2023 budget prepared by the Board of Commissioners, and we'll be touching on the five points of that over the next few minutes. Uh, before we get started with that, I know we have a lot of new members here. And I believe most of not all of the department heads are here. So I'd like uh, each department head to stand and I'll introduce them just so you can associate a face with the title. And again, as always, I encourage you to get to know them, reach out with any questions, and that goes for the county administrator and the board of commissioners as well. So we'll begin with Sheriff Wright. I believe it's here. Right. Sheriff Bill Wright. County Attorney Andrew Livernois. Good evening. I'm Andrew Livernois. Nice to meet you all. Our Register of Deeds, Judith McGrath. Good evening, Our Treasurer, Michael Muzzy. Michael here? Okay. Well, you'll be in next. Uh, of course, County Administrator and HR Director, Deborah Schenke. Well. Our Finance Director, Lori Sharp. Our Nursing Home Administrator, Director Shelley Richardson. Good evening. Hi. Uh, our correction superintendent, Adam Cunningham, was unable to attend tonight, but the deputy superintendent, Jamie Laramie, is here. Jamie? Mm -hmm. Our restorative justice director, Michael McFadden. Good evening, everyone. And our new facilities manager, John Boston. Good evening, everyone. Right. Thank you, Heads. So the essence of the 2023 budget with respect to last year's is, it is 6.5% larger than 2022, approximately $2 million increase over last year's budget. Uh, the good news is it's still substantially below the present inflation rate of 8.7%. So we have a lot of different goals this year uh, for the budget for the county. I think we're aiming fairly high. Uh, one of the, the bullet points that I think that is very important uh, to the county is to reinstate professional developments and employee recognition, because in, a, in an era of workforce shortages and developments, uh, we believe that, that these incentives are especially good for morale going forward for the new calendar year. Um, with respect to the nursing home, as some of you returning members probably know, we've been at two-thirds capacity 
for the last couple of years, certainly since COVID started, but, um, and it's been pretty constant. Uh, there's Kelly has a substantial waiting list. Folks trying to get in and admitted as residents, uh, but we simply don't have the staff uh, to do that. To be able to get to that point, uh, we would probably need anywhere from 10 to 20 uh, full-time nurses to take care of their needs. And right now, despite the incentives that we're offering, despite the wage increases, despite the addition of training, uh, the workforce just isn't there. It's getting slightly better, but we're not where we want to be. Um, there are other there are other problems too in terms of staffing different departments, uh, especially nursing. Um, there's still a, a paucity of, of affordable housing. We're hoping that uh, the state school project, if that deal does pass next month, <clears throat> that will go a long way towards solving that problem with the addition of hundreds, perhaps thousands, of entry level housing uh, in the market. Uh, moving on briefly with corrections, um, Adam's been averaging about 70 inmates. Uh, this has been a pretty consistent number. Uh, the total capacity for the jail is 120. Um, it, it should be noted that one of our challenges uh, for the commissioners is a substantial amount of square footage in the jail has been set aside for core remediation. Um, the core program has really slowed down and crippled by COVID. So one of our challenges going forward, and we'll certainly share our findings with the convention into the new year, is what to do, how to better purpose a lot of that vacant space over at the jail, because presently a lot of it's not being used. The recommended budget uh, for the jail is, is up somewhat, uh, $5,638,000. Um, most of the increase is attributed to uh, wage increases that we've offered across the board. A lot of our funding is used to pay for those wage increases. As I mentioned earlier, we have a new facilities manager. We're very happy to have him. Um, I won't recite the bullet points that are before you. I do want to point out that one of our big projects over the next year or two is a solar array for the county. Mr. Bossy is working on that with the commissioners. And our goal is to use approximately two and a half to three million dollars of the art funds uh, to make the county completely independent from Eversource and to provide all its own electricity going forward. Uh, one of the questions we had um, of this project is how long do the solar panels last? We've been told they have a lifespan of about 25 years. So if this goes forward at that approximate number and we become completely energy independent, uh, the county should see a return on that investment within five years. That is the three and a half million dollar investment if it gets to that point. Moving on to the sheriff's department, there have been some incremental increases. Uh, dispatch has additional employees. Um, I want to point out <clears throat> the under, under Sheriff Wright, uh, one of the things that the sheriff has, has um, put in its task, task list is to uh, make an extra effort to assist outside agencies, area police departments, emergency services, et cetera. Uh, the Board of Commissioners and County Administration feel that this has been a very, very smart use of the funds that the sheriff department receives. Moving on briefly to deeds. Um, Historically and traditionally, you know, Deeds has been, as we say in the business, a very, very good earner for the county. And you know, Judith consistently returns uh, substantial uh, profits to the county. And uh, her funding really hasn't changed much year to year. Uh, certainly, uh, the small increase um, in the budget for this year over the last uh, is well under the present rate of inflation. Well, moving on to uh, the county attorney's office, as a lot of you know, uh, one of the challenges for Andrew over the last couple of years has been dealing with you know, the tremendous backlog in cases. This was brought on, obviously, because of the closure of the courts for many, many months uh, due to COVID. 
Um, he's starting, the department is starting to get caught up. Uh, we've hired a couple of new attorneys. Uh, their work orders are full. Um, so it's still, he's still, they're still playing the catch up game, but they're getting there and things are getting better now that the courts are open. I want to talk a little bit about um, human services and what the nursing home provides and why it's so important. Um, Commissioner Taylor, who is not with us tonight, but he's zooming in, uh, often says the, the nursing home is really um, an alternative of last resort for a lot of elderly folks because they simply uh, don't have the resources to find other means of elder care. And that's why it's been very, very important uh, to the commissioners and to the county administration to do what we can to support the nursing home to the best extent that we can. This has been made especially challenging, obviously, with the, uh, the pandemic. And certainly, um, while that's phased out, it's left a lingering effect on the workforce and the way the department has to be run. Uh, moving on to restorative justice, a lot of folks um, aren't too certain exactly what this department does uh, under, under Mr. McFadden. And I will tell you that I've heard from more than one individual since I've been commissioner for the last couple of years that it's had a very positive impact on their lives and their rehabilitation. Um, I've had people reach out to me. I certainly can't mention names. But they've said that the work they do in putting them back on the path to success uh, has been life changing and sometimes life saving. Moving on to information technology, um, it should be noted that 40% um, of, of the IT costs are in the nursing home budget. So the nursing home uses a lot of that technology. And that's why um, it's especially vital to make sure that it's fully funded going forward. Um, locally, we've been pretty fortunate with mainstay technologies. Um, they've been pretty good as far as, as servicing uh, the equipment we have, answering our questions, and assisting us with upgrading the systems. Well, I think most of you are familiar with general administration you know, and what they do, finance and administration. You know, there are six full-time employees. I can tell you they would probably like to have one or two more. I'm not sure the budget would permit the way revenue is based for 2023. But I can tell you that I'm here frequently meeting with administration and the staff is unfailingly very, very busy. Sometimes they're forced to wear many, many hats, but they get the job done and they do very, very good work. And this printout is a very good example of that. So let's take a quick look at outside agencies. So a few years back when I was on your side of the aisle in the legislature, uh, we voted to phase out some of the subsidies for these outside agencies. Uh, the agencies that currently receive funding are thus listed. Um, I think they're all important. Um, some of them are more important to you than others, but it will be up to the discretion of the chair, the vice chair, and the convention to determine to what extent, if any, you want to subsidize them going forward. It is the recommendation of the Board of Commissioners and Administration that they're all worthy recipients of these funds, and we urge you to continue. Well, with respect to uh, some of the other business, um, we the line and contingency has consistently been two hundred thousand dollars. We recommend that it stay that way. That seems to be a good working number. It's a it's a number recommended by finance, and uh, we recommend that we made it back at that figure. Uh, our fund balance is projected to be approximately two and a half million dollars. We'd like it to be higher. We think it should be higher. Uh, Three and a half million, I think, is a better look for the county. Um, it improves our credit rating. It improves our improves our, our bond rating, and it puts us in a more in a stronger position for solvency. 
if we want to fund projects and improvements going forward. So that is something we would like to see grow over the next three years and not be utilized. Uh, there's a chart with the undesignated fund balance. Uh, you'll see a breakdown of the tax increases since 2012 over the last 10 years. Uh, with respect to the, the actual increase in the, in the 23 budget over 22, it is 6.5%, roughly $2 million. If you put it into perspective to the, the average taxpayer here in Belknap, if you own a $300,000 home, uh, your taxes will go up $124. So that's the dollars and cents of this. Uh, when the commissioners began working with the heads and looking at their submissions and determining um, what cuts we could make, uh, we knew right away this budget was going to be higher. Uh, we knew that unlike some years past, level funding the budget was simply impossible. We made cuts where we felt they could be made, but essentially there just wasn't much we could do to take out from the different light item without maintaining full services here in the county. Uh, we always encourage uh, the convention, the members of the delegation to reach out to the heads, county administration, the commissioners with any questions. Uh, we feel that we're partners of what we're trying to do here, which is really act in the very best interest of the county, which is our home. And any changes in the tax rate affect all of us. So we, we take these things very, very seriously. But we feel that we present the budget to you that is workable, reasonable, and about as close as we can make it about making additional cuts and imperiling future services in all the departments here. So that's a brief overview of our conclusions in going through the budget. Uh, the heads are here tonight, the county administrator, Commissioner Larry and I are here in person, Commissioner Taylor is watching close by. So we are happy to entertain any questions you may have. I'm sure you have many. Mr. Chair, Representative Bogart. Um, just a clarification, you said on the outside agencies, they are currently not funded? No, they are receiving funding. They are. Yeah, Representative, thank you for the question. Uh, what I alluded to was a few years ago when you actually sat in your chair, um, it was determined that some of the subsidies to different agencies be removed because we felt they should be self-sufficient and essentially they have been able to be self-sufficient. It is our recommendation that the remaining agencies that receive county funding should continue to do so, but opinions will vary. Thank you. Learning more. Oh, thank you. That was great. Um, I had a question about nursing home census. Um, what census are you basing that estimate on? Right now, it's sixty percent. Is that correct? It was sixty percent. And 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 for this coming year, you're gonna you would like to add twenty staff. What census is that assuming? The budget that we did with the commissioners was to um, go to um, seventy percent capacity, okay. which would be um, I think up to seventy residents. So I have a question: if if we don't make it, which is very possible. What happens so the, the number drops, the budget number drops, correct? Right? In other words, you have money left over at the end of the year because you haven't been able to hire people. Correct? Right? Are there any other questions? I have a question. My concern is I don't see last year's budget and this year's budget and what you gave us so that there's a comparison that's the kind of thing i'd like to see the binder. i just got it oh it's on there and i had no time to look at it and and, and well, we're just starting now so well, okay you know i, I i'd like when we come to a budget hearing like this, I'd like that information prior 
to have an opportunity to look through it. Thank you for the question, Representative Dumas. I will point out that uh, the convention will not be deciding on his line items tonight. And I believe there'll be more than sufficient time to review what we've submitted to you and thank to you. give it its due diligence. But thank you. You want to where I'm coming from? I, <laughs> believe me, I do, Representative. Am I incorrect? But we got a mailing that had everything on it going back a couple of years, a um, yes. couple of weeks ago. Actually. Okay. Yes, so it's mailed with the notice. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I guess we'll close the public. 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 Is there anybody in the, in the public that would like to make a comment? It was a public generation. I know. <laughs> Other than anybody. Anyone want to make a comment or a question? Sir? To give you a name and address? City. Sure. I'm Dean Hanson. I live on Layton Avenue in Laconia. And I'm on the Board of Supervisors of the County Conservation District. And uh, we've been level funded for several years. And I would like you to entertain increasing our request for $50,000 by 8.7%, which is the rate of inflation. When we prepared our budget, it was in July. And the uh, rate of inflation was not known then. Um, so I'd like you to increase that. It would be it would be a increase of about forty four hundred dollars. What we do with our money is we apply for outside grants, and those grants will do things such as we have a gleaning program. A gleaning program is we have a representative who goes out and talks to local farmers and ask them if they will donate any produce that they are not going to use. This past summer, we collected 20,000 pounds of food. I personally collected apples and corn, which I delivered to the nursing home. So there was, there were, there were people in the city of Laconia and other municipalities that received the free food. Those are people that are um, in a position where they can't necessarily fund their requirement for um, fresh produce. Uh, so our gleaning coordinator's position is a paid position and he contacts local farmers, as I said, and then we get volunteers to go out and to harvest and to bring that, that produce back to a central location where it's distributed to people who are in need. The other thing we do is we help municipalities with relates with uh, projects such as um, road work. So we will help them from the standpoint of helping them to prevent erosion of their roads. And, and that's uh, that goes to their bottom line, it subtracts from their bottom line. In addition, we work on projects such as on Fort Farm Brook um, and some other uh, local streams to help prevent erosion, sedimentation, and create fish habitat. And as you know, I mean, I did not move, I moved here from, from New York. And I moved here from New York because I miss the mountains and the lakes. So I did move, did not move up here um, for any other reason than to be outdoors. And so I <clears throat> uh, encourage you to increase our budget. Uh, we do file for grants for other agent, uh, from other agencies, and we use those funds to um, help us uh, hire uh, consultants such as Trout Unlimited, and we uh, use our monies to pay local contractors to do projects. So we're, um, you know, we're here to keep this beautiful 
environment beautiful. So again, I would encourage you to increase our budget, even though we only requested 50,000 that we uh, have it be more along the lines of 54, $55,000. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the public? Thank you. So I am the um, one and only employee of the Department of County Conservation District Credit System and uh, the Department of South. Yes, sir. Can I see your name? Thank you. So the current funding level is um, $50,000. Uh, I sent out a mail to everybody in the email out there to look through that. You'll see that we calculated based on a $200,000 property value that's $50,000 for the property owner would be paying 31 cents less than the postage stamp on this group. We figured through grants and other um, funding sources that we are able to leverage based on money that the county um, affords us. For every dollar that you put in our budget, we can bring in approximately $18. That's our current everything out there. So thank you. Is there any, any, anyone else? <clears throat> Excuse me. As a comment or a question? I just, I just want to take up something that happened when uh, Russ Dume has asked about uh, the, the time frame that we involved. Uh, I actually started the state budgeting process in 1971. And Are you the, really that old? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, the budget process follows its own calendar. It has nothing to do with the with the uh, with the regular calendar, and that's that's exactly what's going on right here tonight. The budget for the for the county of Belknap runs from July one. I mean, from uh, yeah, from July one of. Are we still on the count. Uh, January, 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 January. January. Oh, yeah, that's good. It starts on January first and goes to December thirty first. But of course, the the county delegation doesn't get elected until you know November, and so every other year there's a there's a big hooray about what, what what's going to get spent and how do you find out, and that's why all of these papers come out. In the, in the middle of January, and you're not going to be able to vote on this budget for at least a month. At least a month. If you really do a good job, you can do it in a month. But I'd like to see that happen. Uh, and or it can take longer. The state is even worse. the The current calendar for the state of New Hampshire uh, expires on June 30th of this year, 2020. Excuse me. It's not this year. January, excuse, excuse me, I even get confused with this. The calendar year for the state is, is July 1 to December 31. So right now, uh, we, are, we are in uh, fiscal year 2022. And that ends on July 1st. But of course, uh, the money doesn't come in that way. So by the time you get to July 1st, you've had that you've had the budget presented first by the agencies, then to the uh, legislature, and then it goes starts going through the, the, the public hearing process. And by the time you by the time the legislature gets the vote on the budget, it's at least during the month of June. How do you how do you get away with that? You get away with that by having having <clears throat> You have a fiscal committee, you have this committee, that committee that keeps this thing going for the whole year. But it's very confusing to the public. It's even confusing to us. Uh, and I just, in, in answer to what Russell had to say, uh, it really does sound like a like a the boss is being uh, pulled, is being pulled, pulled by the car, uh, and in some in some fashion it is. But everybody just has to understand that you have to you have to adapt to the process as best you can. Because the object of the game is to make sure that the public is served. And you can't do that just by complaining about how the process works. You have to, to, to buckle down and, and work on it uh, to make sure that people wind up, wind up whole at the end of the process. That's all I have to say on the subject. Is there any other comments? 
I'm looking at the budget. I'm really amazed that the human services is so low, special mental health, when we know there's an expansion in need for mental health services across the sheet. COVID has impacted that greatly. So I would advocate that we consider raising the human services budget. Mental health must be what comes out of How much of this human service is going to know? Hard for me to say. Honestly, you know, we, we pay the state a, a flat amount that they said is 12 equal monthly payments. Okay. So but I don't have a handle on that. Given the payment service meeting that we're not paying out of our county budget for any public health services like visiting nurses, et cetera, it would be good to consider doing that for the citizens of the Thank you. Any others? <clears throat> Hi, John Lindblom from UNH Walker Extension and the County Office Administrator here at the Development Office. And following up on that point, I, I wanted to point out we have some misconceptions about what Extension does around the state because we're often best known for programs like food and agriculture and 4 H, which are all awesome and we're uh, proud to have that representation here in the county. But we also do offer programs in other areas such as health and wellness, um, and we're really expanding our mental health offerings in recent years. Uh, I believe we really do offer something for everybody in the county at Extension, and I just wanted that to sort of be highlighted at this time. Anyone else? It would be really helpful for me if the people that spoke had some sort of contact information to share with us. Business cards. Business cards. <clears throat> oh, I'm talking to people from the audience, actually. Oh, yeah. I know how to get you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people that just spoke, if you get the business cards to, 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 to all of us, it's probably would be the advantageous. Representative. Uh, thank you, Chair. You could also recommend the public guests. We should have all our emails in the state. Yeah, we have our <clears throat> our legislative emails that you can uh, send us information so that we all have your well, contact nice. information and such. Is there anyone else? Being none, we'll, uh, we'll uh, close the public hearing. Next thing on the agenda is the process for the budget review. Well, without objection, I'd like to uh, appoint three uh, chairs, for group, what I'm calling Group A, Group B, and Group C. <laughs> and have uh, another section is the entire delegation. And uh, I have uh, appointed uh, departments to each of these, these groups. And I will give you, unless we have an objection already, <laughs> is the yeah. representative. Thank you. Um, is that the only alternative that you're presenting to us today? This is my my suggestion. If somebody has uh, wants to object to this and have their own, we'll we'll uh, talk about all, all of the proposals. Okay. Um, what I'm proposing is uh, Group A would be the nursing home, the registry of deeds, and county maintenance. Group A, and uh, I'd like to have uh, Representative Coker be the chair of that. Uh, group B would be uh, the Sheriff's Department, County Convention, the County Attorney, and the County Administration. And that would be chaired by Representative Bulger. Um, group C would be Corrections, Restorative Justice, Information and Technology, and the Finance Office. And that would be uh, chaired by Representative O'Hara. And then uh, some of some of these departments would be uh, examined by the entire delegation. 
Uh, so what, what would happen from here is I uh, go through each one of these and find out who's interested in being on which which group. I uh, I'm looking for more than just four or five. Uh, you know, before we've had it so that there was like five people did the entire budget. I want to include as many people as possible. I want a cross section of uh, viewpoints. So uh, I'm I'm looking to, to get like six on each of these groups, so that if uh, only four show up, they still have a, a quorum. So that that's my proposal. If, uh, if there are any objections to that, this would be the time to do that. Representative Conway. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a question. You said. What departments are you talking about reviewing by the entire delegation? The entire delegation would be health and human services, outside agencies, and debt services. Are there any other questions? Representative. Um, when I first heard about this, it sounded like you got a good idea. My apologies, Chair, for not getting back to you. Yeah, I've been through this process once in industry, and it did not work. And I'm afraid that this might not be a good way of doing it compared to Executive Council with seven members. Our executive committee with seven members. I believe it worked well um, last budget. May <laughs> <laughs> um, I continue? Since we're, this is a three um, group effort the administrator, the commission, uh, Belknap administrator, Belknap commission, and the delegation. Um, I would hope we get input from everyone on that. Well, at this point, I'm not sure how to deal with this. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to get a cross section of everybody's opinion on, uh, you know, with the, with, on, the, on the different departments. Um, so, do we want to put it up for Representative Hewitt? Following up on. on the gentlemen's uh, comments. Uh, we did the same thing uh, in 1971 uh, and it didn't work at all. The problem is what you're doing is just you're separating parts of the whole into little, into little groups and each group has its own thoughts and each group winds up as a result of all the discussions they wind up with what they think of the real priorities that they need to address. When you get four of those, you then, when you come to a, to a hearing with all of them, you got to get them all to argue about who, who's entitled to what. And that's worse than just going through the departments and trying to figure out how much money you're going to have, how much money, and as, also you need to decide how much money you need. Right, and then decide how much money you're going to have, and then get everybody together. You can have you can have small groups looking at different sections of the budget, uh, but as far as making uh, recommendations for numbers, that's going to get you into a, a real mess at the end. Believe me. we had we had pages of numbers going all over the place because nobody could decide one thing from another. Right, we, and look if you if you well, you're all you're all in the legislature. Uh, if you wind up on the if you uh, wind up on the uh, finance committee, like I always do, uh, you're going to wind up with thirty people trying to decide what to do with three or four billion dollars a year. That ain't easy, but it gets done. We, we have we have sub we have sub there's three divisions in the uh, House Finance Committee, and they all have it, and you can tell. That the, the units of government that, that are involved in them are similar for each group. Uh, and everybody comes together at the end 
and lays out lays out the facts. And with, you have a small group, small groups sitting there who have more information than the rest of the people. That's not wrong. Okay. Uh, it's just that you you can't get into a situation where you appoint groups that are going to have um, uh, fixed ideas about what should happen. They can't get too too attached to the, to the units that they're using, and that happens all the time when you try and create little subcommittees of a group like this. So I'm on like, the uh, finance committee in Congress, and it seems to good be luck. Pardon me. <laughs> good luck. Well, I was last term, and uh, the way that that worked out, you know, uh, each little group, each division, studied their own departments, and uh, they they came forward with uh, recommendations, and uh, it's, it's so time consuming that if you don't do that, um, somebody would be full time. We, we almost wore anyone. But what happened down there was uh, that uh, for the most part, when we made our recommendations, people uh, respected our opinions and uh, figured that we'd done our job and that uh, what we came forth with would, would work. And uh, we put it all together and uh, the governor signed it. So it seemed to work in that particular case, but I know that every case is going to be a little different. 1971, I don't remember much about that. <laughs> that in that regard, one of the things that the finance committee has that we don't is they have the legislative budget assistant, they have the, uh, the administrative office, and they have all kinds of help to do this, this heavy lift. We got us to deal with, with this. Representative Nagel. Um, I, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, we're going to read Representative Closure. He said, Could we at one time have seven people on the executive committee? Yes. Well, yes. Yes, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Would that be a easier way to go forward with this is have two more people on the executive committee. Yeah. Well, I'm just like, <laughs> one group, in my opinion, they're going to have seven different opinions okay. and it's going to be hard to come to one. That's just my opinion. What we got to do is uh, Representative Boger. Wow. Mr. Chairman, the this is a hefty budget to go through. I'm not sure when the counting board needs to be done in, but it, it seems to me that by dividing it into three sections, you involve all 18 representatives, and that gives each six group of six a certain sections of the budget to look at and to come into it with and have an ability to talk with the department managers and, and get the insight versus having everybody coming at the seven people at once trying to, to, to look at their section of the budget. This way, who may has their focus on a handful of people to work with, group B and group C, the same thing, which then enables both the department heads and the entire delegation an opportunity to learn in depth and get intimate with all the numbers that are being involved instead of trying to crunch all $35 million in one shot. So, you know. Do we have any other comments? Oh, oh Representative Sorry. Sorry, I didn't see you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this has been tried on several different occasions. Um, there's been a lot of processes that have been tried over the years for this delegation. And this is one of them. I'm not gonna say it's not going to work, um, but I know that sometimes um, 
that we sometimes make things more confusing as a poet, and we have to be cognizant when you're scheduling of the department heads. Um, yeah. And it can get very dicey when it comes to our timeline. And um, I would defer to some of the department heads who um, have experienced a lot of different ways that we have done the budget over since 2010, I've been coming to these hearings. So um, I wouldn't say that this is the worst, but I wouldn't say it is the best. That's just my two Thank you. Yeah. Okay, one one more thing is that the when you if you have groups and it's not a bad idea to have a group that everybody has subcommittees, right? Uh, but you, you should make sure that the groups understand that their job is not to determine how much money this group is going to get. Because this is however many groups you have, you're going to have that many opinions. And as long as everybody understands that their job their job is to find out the answers to all the questions that are asked when they all get together. Because I don't know if if, if somebody is if somebody is responsible for the sheriff's department, somebody else is responsible for the nursing home. I ain't gonna know everything there is about both both of those if if I'm on one committee. I'm gonna they're gonna be people who have all kinds of questions and ideas. And that's what has to be presented in the end to the whole delegation, so that the budget, uh, the budget makes sense when it's voted. Okay. Are there any other? Um, I just wanted to put in a, a plug for the um, having the executive committee meet with every department head and kind of act as a budget committee, um, just because in. 15 years I've watched this process happen and have seen many different ways tried and smaller committees is one of them. Um, but one thing I would say is 60% of every department that you're gonna look at is wages, personnel, yeah. wages, benefits, the consistency from department to department uh, just makes it go more efficiently when there's one group rather than having to go through all of that with every single department. So there's a core, myself, the finance director will be at every meeting. Um, and so watching things develop very differently than they would if it was a consistent group of five going through the whole thing. And you're right, getting opinions from everybody, everyone's perspective is important. And hopefully, um, if you're interested in a particular department or every department, the meetings are all open. They're all going to be open public meetings, so everyone would be encouraged to attend all of them. It's just my two cents and my plug. Representative Pompois. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And not only that, is every single one of them are streamed live, and then you can go back on and look at the YouTube videos to get all the detail. Just going to start that up quick. Representative Bolga. Is anyone interested in going to this as a delegation, have a whole delegation line by line? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Thanks so much. It's a lot of work for all of you, but yeah. it would work. Well, you know, maybe from that. Right. Once. Yeah. Representative Terry, thank you. I just wanted to echo um, Administrator Shackett's um, observations from my own experience with other governing bodies, with which I've been a part, uh, president of the board of uh, trustees of a uh, corporation and uh, smaller bodies, and the, the budget committee approach has typically in the approach that has worked most effectively in, in those situations. For anyone else? Yes, Mr. Chair. This, this is uh, Charlie. If- uh, Representative if, Sinclair. Yes, thank you. If, if this doesn't have to be decided tonight, and I'm not sure about that, is this something we could table so that we could, uh, till the next meeting, so we could all talk amongst ourselves and try to get a little more educated on all the pros and cons. Is that a motion? <laughs> I'll, I'll make it a motion if I'm able to, yes. 
kind of motion to table now. No, he's talking about table. Then I'm wondering if he's making that motion. Mr. Well, Chair, there presently is an yeah, addition to the no motion. Is. There is. There is. Um, okay. Okay, I was thinking he was tabling the entire the entire decision. Is what I was wondering if he was. That's correct. That's exactly what I'm recommending. Structure sounds like. Yeah. Are you making the motion? Yes. A motion on I'll the floor. To table the motion. He's making a motion to table the process. But what motion are we tabling? There's no motion on the floor right now. There, no one objected to you. Discussion. To end, we're tabling the process budget review. Entire it doesn't have to be a motion. No, there, okay, so there, I is want a motion, there is a proper motion to table the discussion of this item and continue holding over until a date that is specified, such as the next meeting or a year from now or whatever. It's always useful when making a motion to table of, of this nature to indicate when you um, are going to take it off the table. Although ordinarily, if you don't specify the date automatically, it would become come up with the next meeting. So okay, the motion done. is to table discussion. The, the, the discussion and decision-making process for budget review. I believe that's what Representative St. Clair has moved, and I believe that's what I heard from Representative Comtois. So are you going to put in a, uh, a, a date where it will come off the table? I I believe that Representative St. Clair said the next meeting. Uh, yeah, I do, too, now that you're yes. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? It's got, it's got to be roll call. He's on. Oh, roll, roll call. Right. So it's a table discussion on the process of how we're going to budget until next meeting. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Representative Bodwin. Yes. Representative Bogert? Yes. Representative Boards? Yes. Representative Coker? Yes. Representative Comtois? Yes. Representative DeMays? Yes. Representative Harvey Bolio? Yes. Representative Hewitt? Yes. Representative McCarter? Yes. Representative Nagel? Yes. Representative Pilot? Yes. Representative Pilot? Yes. Representative Smart? Yes. Representative St. Clair? Yes. Representative Terry? Yes. Representative Trevor? Yes. Unanimously adopted. So that, uh, that process is tabled until uh, next month's meeting. Uh, next thing on the agenda is the rule of order. Oh, any Representative Perry? Yes. Uh, for those who are, who are new to the delegation, Knew it would send that we have never been a member of the delegation before, as opposed to those who are returning from the back as far as 1971. Um, <clears throat> during the last two years, up until April, we did not operate with any um, any rules of order. In April of 22, uh, 20. When two, I wrote, brought a motion that was passed unanimously to the effect that we would uh, operate essentially under Robert's rules of uh, order. And we did so beginning in May through October of this past year. And in my unbiased opinion, as the mover of the motion, I thought it worked out quite well. In addition to the fact that in my 40 years of participation in governing legislative bodies, we've all, always operated under um, rules of order. So I would like to, uh, since we, apparently we, we need, this is a new delegation and we need to make the decision again since it's, it just doesn't carry over. If in fact, if, if it does, I don't think we need to do anything. If it doesn't, then I'm prepared to make the same motion that I did in April of 2022. But I would just like to add, uh, from the introduction to the complete idiot's guide to uh, Robert's rules, which I find uh, very helpful as someone who can be idiotic at times, that uh, parliamentary procedure is all about helping people run meetings efficiently, effectively, and fairly. It is important stuff for any group that wants to make sure it doesn't violate the rights of its members and that wants to get its business done as quickly and efficiently as possible. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, that was my experience with his body in May through October this past year. I think that Robert's rule served as well. Uh, and in view of the fact that there really aren't too many other options other than having no rules or having somebody now become expert in nascent rules, I would move that the Belknap County delegation adopt Robert's rules of order for the conduct of its meetings that they should be need. I uh, I caught wind that this was going to be uh, discussed, and so I uh, I contacted an attorney friend of mine. Yes, and he told me that uh, it didn't have to be voted on again. It just stays in in place until it's voted out. So well, just that's why I, I cut you off. I'm sorry to cut you. Off. Well, well, I'm happy to hear that, and I'm delighted, and I hope that we'll. Continue to operate under Robert's rules, and then nobody wants to resent it. No. Mr. Chairman, I I agree with this. Now, the problem the problem is that there are a number of versions of Robert's rules of order, right? And they're all they're all and it's it's organized, and it's not just off the off the wall. It's by 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 date, by year, in in different times in history. Uh, Mr. Robert wrote the rules, discovered that times have changed and what they what they do, they have to publish another complete uh, complete uh, a complete a complete publication containing Robert's rules of order. Right? And it's not Robert's, it's Robert. It's apostrophe S. Yeah. Right? And uh, you have to you have to have everybody able to get the, the existing copy. You can't. You can't say uh, he might have one one year and I might have another year, and it doesn't change all that much. But lots of times it changes just enough so that it create a disaster. So what we would what we would need is we would need to have uh, the motion made, and then each year you specify if it's a different version of Robert's rules of water that you're using. Simple. Well, that part wasn't wasn't. In the original, is there a way that we can uh, set the rules so we're guided by Robert's rule but not lock into the? Like the seconds and so on and so forth. Okay, let me, uh, Representative Terry. I get you for the price of one year because I am also able to be fun to the reference of you. And the motion that we adopted that is still in force stated, recognizing the complexity of the rules, the delegation and its committee shall, one, make a good faith effort to abide by its provisions, and two, not be in consequential error if due to lacking in awareness of a provision of the rule. So that's our, yes. So I'm happy to provide a copy to the minutes if we need to have them. I would like to put it in the minutes just so they're in there for guys. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, Representative Boger. Uh, to answer your other concern, if there is something that comes before the board, uh, a motion can be made to suspend yeah. for that item so that you can just have pandemonium discussion <laughs> with the item. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, I, I guess I'll just read the entire motion now because here this this is this it speaks to another sentence in the motion. The Belknap County delegation adopts Robert's rules of order. The the, the understanding of the delegation was defined with it, it, that it would be the most current vision going forward for the conduct of its meetings and each of the committees it may appoint, except that any except that if Except that if in any of its committees may waive its applicability by majority vote with respect to matters specified by such votes, which addresses Representative Bogart's concern that if we decide that we want to suspend or we want to waive the rules and have a, a, a Donnybrook on any particular issue or matter, that we have the right to do so by majority. <laughs> Continuing, recognizing the complexity of the rules, delegation, and its committees. Don't make a good faith effort to abide by the provisions and do not be a consequential error if you lack in the rules of the rules. 
that that motion that was that was drafted I believe covered all covers all of the concerns that have been expressed this evening. And so I would enthusiastically recommend to my colleagues that we continue the policy that we have in place. And thank you. Anyone else? It, it seems to me that that doesn't need a, a motion or a vote or anything. It just automatically stays yes. in place. Thank you. So without any thought we move forward. Uh, the next thing we have here is to set the meeting date for the Gunstock Commissioner appointments. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> Representative Comstock. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. It was brought to my attention by a constituent just recently that the notice for the Gunstock Area Commissions was not posted properly. It states here. Um, let's see where it is. Applicants must be a resident property owner of Belknap County. That is no longer the case, HB 1442, which was passed in 2020, uh, states that members of the commission shall be residents of Belknap County. So by posting it that way, we have just disenfranchised over 50% of our population at least uh, from applying for commission. Well, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, it, is, it is on their website too, the Gunstock Area Commissioner website. So do I have the remedy? So, Jim, what is the what is the remedy? Oh, Are we aware of what the remedy is? It's an issue. I don't. Uh, that's that's a that's a definition of who's eligible to to be a. Yeah. If it's incorrect, oh. we need to review. I'm going to have to get some. It's a, it's a state law. Property. The state, state law. law. It's state law. law that says you have to be a resident, not a property owner. It needs to be reposted. It needs to be reposted so we can't even set the uh, set the appointment at this time. No, you can set the appointment. You can set the date. Just set it far enough so that you have time to post it. Right. Let it run for a week and give any, anyone else mm -hmm. an opportunity to apply. And it could also be possible that anybody that does not qualify for the law would not be a valid candidate. We could still meet there may be more. That. Is that the case? There may be more. There right. may be more. There may be more. I mean, you just That's disenfranchised well. over 50% of Donna County by oh, posting it that said that they had to be a property owner. That was the criteria that was in the act. And they do not have to be a resident. But it's, it's my understanding that the pre present statute has eliminated that. That was, was that repealed? That it re eliminated the requirement to be a property owner. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and so the the ad was posted that you had to be a property owner to apply. Ads wrong. That so is wrong. Many, that's that, that, kind of, that's that's discriminatory. Tenant that doesn't own the property that wants the position. So consequently, yeah. we've eliminated some, so we can't just throw away the ones that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Representative Hewitt. The way, way I understand the statute, the statute used to say that the person must be a a resident and property owner. Used to. Used, yeah, to. used to. Used to. Now it doesn't. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about it. If, as long as the person is a resident of Belknap County, they qualify. That should, they should have to certify to that in, that in applying for the position. I don't see where it's a big deal. Well, we got to let other people don't want to apply. As far as this, this circumstance is concerned, sure. You gotta you gotta repost this thing. Yeah. Um, be a resident and not a landowner. Therefore, they have been right. included from a fine. Yeah. So we have to think this, repost this and do it the right way. Yeah. Representative uh, O'Hara. Thank you. But if I'm getting the understanding correct from the county administrator, we can set a gun stock meeting further out. As long as we give enough time for applications to come in before that, correct? Right? Yes. Yeah. So we can still set a meeting tonight for a gun stock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. So how much time do we have to have? Yeah, two weeks would be enough. Two weeks. Two weeks. So if we make it to the first part of January. Yes. Has somebody got a a, a motion? Okay. Well, you don't really need a motion to set it. Yeah, we don't need a motion. But I two weeks. I mean, it, just listening to what Representative Terry was saying about, you know, there's people that aren't that uh, aren't property owners that that are residents that may not be around, and, and you just can't say that you know, next week I'm going to have a meeting. Uh, 
you have to put it, you have to publicize it in a manner that is, is calculated to uh, reach the people to whom it is addressed. Right? So you can't just, you can't just, for example, take this uh, notice and post it for Coney Daily Sun. Coney Daily Sun is, is published all throughout the county and it isn't the only publication. Oh. Well, so I'm I think you need to have a little more time than that. I'm going to need help from the county administrator. We, none of our notices, all of our notices are posted in the Laconia Daily Sun. Right. There, because there's no requirement that they be posted in a, uh, any, any other way, basically. It has to reach uh, most of it or generally, it's, uh, there's yeah. some qualification. So general, we can there that, general publication. Yes. Uh, that that notice could be would be posted again the same way only with different language saying that you uh, anyone who is a property owner or or whatever the language resident. resident or property owner um, can apply and we can get the ad in the paper uh, I think tomorrow or the next day and if we put it out there for a week. Uh, I didn't think you were probably going to meet until January anyway, so that would allow uh, at least two weeks, probably three weeks, for someone to apply before you have your meet. I'm going to uh, call on Representative uh, Terry. Did I, I think she, uh, the jacket, uh, could you tell us how long um, the first posting, uh, when, when it began, when it ended, sort of thing? So, a uh, frame of reference going forward. I want to be fair. So, for example, and I want to be extreme here, uh, you know, if it was four months, you know, we want to be somewhat comparable, uh, even though it's remedial, and it would be less than four months. But if, could you tell us how, what we're talking about? Was it a month? Was it two weeks? It was at least a month. It was run for four weeks. Um, it was run once a week for four weeks. Mm -hmm. Four, four, four weeks. So yes. that, that, that helps me. That was, so it sounds like it has to be the same. Well, makes sense. That, 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 was, like, that four weeks was because we were trying to push it back for the new delegation. Please, Last please, time it wasn't. It makes sense. Right. It's never been that long. So that was only because we were pushing it back for the delegation. I'm not sure. Chair, 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 Representative Bogart. Ask the question uh, to the county administrator. Isn't it just legally required to be posted for 10 days? No. And I think that's not that I know of. for public meetings in 10 days. It's seven if days it for a zoning, delegation meeting. For zoning board meetings and stuff like that with the city, it's 10 day noticing. So that's why I was saying. Right. There's days. no requirement like that for posting an ad for that stock area. Okay. Representative Boards. So I'm looking at my calendar right now. Maybe it's 12. If we did something like say the week of the 16th, I don't know how that works for people. Like it's almost five weeks for us to notice, get the resumes, go through the resumes, and then interview these candidates. Makes sense. The third week in January. I'm not like the same exact day, but I'm, I'm looking at today's the 12th. We go, that gives us one, two, it gives us five weeks to come up with candidates to post it to get our resumes and all Representative Pompoa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to make sure that we're cognizant that we're in a holiday season. <laughs> and so that these folks um will have an opportunity because right now there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of people out of town and stuff going out of town that we're just cognizant of that. And I think the third week in January is is pretty fair. Um, but I just want to make sure that the deadline to get the resume in is after the first of the year. And get the first of the year. After. <laughs> I just say so moved on whatever she just said. Yeah. That'd be it. <laughs> so you want to make that a motion? Or is that it? I was, in, I was just making a comment. So, so the resumes, can we make part of the motion? The resumes are due no later than the ninth. And the meeting is going to and that gives us a week to review. So, can we make it tonight? Yes, sir. And I'll second that. Okay. One at a time, please. How much are we being paid? 
Representative Terry, are you making that a motion? Uh, yes. Would you repeat it, please? <laughs> yes. Uh, I move that uh, in, in light of the uh, information that has been brought to us tonight by Representative Pondra with respect to the requirements of state law, that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the opening uh, be reposted uh, with a deadline of January the 9th for reception of any additional application, any additional application, and a meeting of the delegation on the 16th at 6.30 here to here to uh, review the applications to, to make a decision. Okay, everybody. Are we good with the 16th being a holiday? Candidates are going to be away with their children. 16th is a holiday. I'm, just, I'm okay with it as long as everyone else is good. I just don't want to drop anyone. Uh, I'll be here. I'll be here. What date are we talking about? Somebody said March. Somebody said January. Who went? January. January. January 16th. That's a month. Any other? I agree. So my opinion is that it works. It's a whole school holiday, so it's just nice. It's, it's bad optics. It's totally bad optics. It's really bad. Yeah, we gotta get a we gotta get a second, then we'll have a discussion. A second motion. Okay, we have a second. Now for discussion, we'll start with the uh, representative. Thank you. I, I just want to make a statement that any meetings that are held on Monday nights, Representative Barney has never been able to attend a uh, county meeting on Monday night since his, he's been elected. <laughs> I'm willing to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to move the meeting to the 17th. Yes. How about the 18th? I'm willing to make the meeting the 18th. Wednesday the 8th. Wednesday the 8th. Wednesday the 8th. Wednesday the 8th. Here. 18th. Is that friendly for Representative Boger? You accept that amendment? Oh. Your <laughs> I think I can revise the main motion. I got it. We're good. <laughs> yeah. My motion is now going to be the 9th from the 8th. Okay. Okay. Good. You still second that? Check. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We need a roll call. Yeah. I, I just, I just had a call. Just a chairman? I got to talk to Dave. Yeah. Dave, or whatever. You can call me whatever you want. Um, I, since I'm new to this, is there anything sacred about Monday? I mean, we can do any day of the week. We're not we're meeting on Monday. We're meeting on the 18th. I'm just, yeah, because there was seemed to be like an emphasis on a Monday. It doesn't have to be. We just throw it out of the hat. I love it. Perfect. Thank you. Any further discussion? So, um, Representative Trotty. So a quick question on this process. The people that have already applied, are they going to be notified they have to apply again? Or no. are we... Yeah, no. The motion stated that their applications are still good and we accept the ones that are They're going to have to be notified as to when, when the, they're going to be. Yeah. yeah. So, what happens if they're just property owners and not residents on the applications that we received? Because that's the big question, right? My understanding is with this process, they have to be residents. Oh, if What's the legal definition of residency? Oh, dude, yes. We have to find it. So yeah. that's all I have. We have to go with the We have to go with just to be clear, the ad said they had to be a resident property owner. All right. Very specific. So the what are they going to have to do? Are they going to have to bring proof? No, I'm just saying what the ad said. They said they had to be a resident property. Not it used to be a property. property. So now it's going to be a resident. Okay, resident. It's just a residence. Yes. yes. Representative Shackett, the mm -hmm. chairman, has said that she's going to use the language in the statute. Right. So we're, right. we're clear. <laughs> okay, but I got I got a couple more hands over okay. here. So, Re Representative yeah. Nagel? Yeah, I, I just figured out why it's Monday. So now that we're all elected, we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at the state house. I assume at this, like, 
January that we won't have responsibilities in the evening on that day, correct? In January? <laughs> and right fully on. Dream on. Yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> That's the reason for Monday, correct? Is that correct? Not necessarily. <laughs> well, okay, uh, Representative Poker. I just want to make one quick statement. The 16th, I don't care what Monday it is, like other than the 16th, but not not Martin Luther King Day. That's the only comment I want to make. Going forward. Any Monday problem? Any problems? Any not in the Just a comment. It would be a really bad idea to have not Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Yeah. This is. I'm not going to restate the motion, but Representative Terry's motion about the Gunstock Commission. What is the date on that? January 9th is due date for application. January 18th is the date of the meeting. I'll buy that. Uh, Chairman. Yes. Representative Bodman. Yes. Representative Bogart? No. Representative Boards? Yes. Representative Kroger? Yes. Representative Comptoir? Yes. Representative Dumais? Yes. Representative Harry Bolia? Yes. Representative Hewitt? Yes. Representative Carter? Yes. Representative Nagel? Yes. Mike Boards? Yes. Representative Joe Yes. yes. <laughs> Representative Smart? Yes. Yeah. Representative St. Clair? I just want to be clear about the date because I unfortunately can't hear as well as you guys can. I know the date, but that's a Wednesday night? Yes. That's correct. Okay, then my vote is yes. Thank you. Representative Gary? Yes. Representative Charter? Yes. Okay. Yes. <sighs> 16 to 1 it passed. Wow. Yeah. Um, I can't <clears throat> done with that. I don't. <laughs> I've seen uh, oh, need a motion, but I'm saying it's all out of business. Right. Other business. I'm not going to think that. Okay, so what other business do we have? Mr. Chairman? I'm going to mail it in. Right. All right. I just wanted to point out a few things that are in your packet. Um, yeah, please do. That are very important to us. First, there's a little, uh, there's a letter welcoming you and asking for your contact information that you want us to make public um, or uh, I think there's an opportunity for you to give us one email address to communicate with you that you don't want public and one that we're going to post on the website. We get a lot of requests for contact information for all of you so we want to be able to put that on our website so if you can fill that form out and just leave them on your desk when you leave just leave them on the table with collecting in the morning. Um, you also have a W-9 because you're going to get um, paid uh, mileage and a meeting fee. So if you fill that out um, in the event that you should reach $600, which is unlikely, don't get hopes up. <laughs> 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 um, the other thing, a lot of information we gave you about the history of the county, which is good information in here. And I think there's also a mileage um, sheet. It must be on the back of my pages. Anyway, you have a form that you'll get at every meeting that you um, can fill out and put uh, the mileage that you drove here from your from your home to here and back, so we can add mileage to pay you for that. I think that is all. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention, just because um, we're quiet for a minute, is. <laughs> It's, it's going to be a late start to the budget. So unless you, you know, at this point, your next meeting, when you will talk about how you're going to proceed with the budget is going to be that date, uh, January 18th, which is fairly late start to preparing the budget. And the due date for the budget is April 1st. You'll want to have the budget done by April 1st. Otherwise, the commissioner's recommended budget will take effect. Mr. Chair. Representative Pompoy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, whereas January 18th is slated as a to elect gunstock commissioners, we can have a meeting prior to that 
um, in sure. January to discuss the budget process, yeah. which I think would be very helpful. Great. <laughs> no, I'm not section eight. You have a suggestion as to a date? I can do that. Can we meet um, okay. here? January 10th. January 10th. Work for everybody in the 10th and 6.30 here. My calendar is going to be slow for me. Otherwise, I'm... Oh, don't even say that. Did you change? Did you change? Okay, so what do we make sense? I think we're going to do it. Vote for everything. And so the... So the... Without objection, it'll be uh, January 10th at 6.30 here. Bingo. Okay, without objection. Is there any objections? No. Seeing none. Is that a motion that we made or we just discussed? Without objection. Without objection, so ordered. Amen. David, have we got anything else from the Representative Boger. This was a question to the administrator, the W9 form. What do we do with this? You can just leave it on. You, you can just leave it at your table. Personal information on there that is not recommended to be and in the open with your social security numbers, and I don't advise to leave it on you. Good point. Then you can turn them that. in to me. I'll wait here if you're going to fill them out, <laughs> or you can email that, scan and email them to me later, or turn them to me later. However, you want to do it. I like to make a motion that we have Cleveland Water and Bath put together a packet of all communications related to gun stock with the bill for legal matters to be handled by delegation to be presented to the delegation to then make a decision on how to handle the communications going forward. I'll second that motion. Do we have any discussion on that? Wait a minute. What's that all about? What, what information are we looking for and why? Email to the control group to the attorney. All communication. Oh, uh, it's a gun stock mess. Yes. Representative Terry. I, I think there are some people here who are not going to understand. So once the motion is made in second, I believe if you comment upon Representative Harry to give some background so that before there's any vote that's taken, if there is at least some rudimentary understanding of the issues that yeah. are in play here. Yeah. Uh, but let me also say that one of the reasons that I asked early in the meeting when Representative O'Hara wanted to do some form, I mean, I would but Representative O'Hara wanted to amend the agenda before it was adopted. In other words, change the proposed agenda to add the other business. I don't believe the representative there indicated that the item of business that and I was that, that's what I was looking for. And I would just have to say going forward that it would really engender a, a higher degree of trust that we could know if somebody wants to bring something up under a topic of other business and they know what they want to bring up, that they specify what it is so that under other business it can be noted right then and there instead of being surprised at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Representative thank you. And Ms. Representative, Mr. Chair, thank you. Representative Harris stated that the reason for other business was for the new reps on the delegation to ask questions and any other business that they had. That is what my understanding was based on what you said. I specifically use the words like I was not trying to get into the discussion of gun stock at that moment. 
Well, again, you know, like is like is not specifying the item that you knew that you were going to bring up later. In the uh, I, 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 I really, I, I move to table the motion. And I'll second that. Don't we know it's coming up at the next meeting? We're not surprised. Well, that uh, takes priority, table in motion, and we have a second. Uh, it's not the case. We'd like to uh, yeah. 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 speak about yeah. that. I think I did, so thank you. Well, I thought you did too, but I wanted to make it. Thank you. Can you read the motion, please? Pardon me? No. Can you read the motion, please? Well, We're tabling. Motion to table. The motion is to table. So the date on the ninth or whenever it was, or the tenth. No, 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 on the uh, the emails with the gun stock. Oh, okay. I okay. The, the motion is to table. All right. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? No, you got to go roll roll. roll call. Uh, so table till next meeting. Chairman, sorry. Yeah, I think, yes. Representative Bogart? Yes. Representative Bogart? I'm not sure what type of thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. Are we going to have points? Right. Representative Bogart? No. Representative Bogart? Yes. Representative Dumais? No. Yeah. Representative Representative Hewitt? Yes. Representative McCarter? Yes. Representative Nagel? Yes. Clerk Bush now. Representative Cloger? Yes. Representative Smart? Yes. Representative St. Clair? Yes. Representative Terry? Yes. Representative Trider? No. Eleven six is tabled for the next meeting. Yeah. Four cities. Yeah. Just for this meeting. People don't have a clue what this is all about. I really don't have to really need to know what what we're voting on, and and it can be explained here in five or ten minutes. It's something that you've got to contact people that have been here for a while to find out what it's all about. But you'll know how to vote when we get back here in January. Motion for adjournment. Motion for adjournment. I, I think it was a motion for adjournment. Second. 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 Let's get out of here. We don't have to go all the time. No, right. The agenda is thank you. Well, we'll take a second. Say aye. Aye. Then.